So Ron Howard. Yeah. Extreme sequences. How are you? I'm I'm doing all right, man. How are you doing, Jay? Good, good, good. So I usually you interview me. <laughs> so now I would like to ask you some questions. I'm sure all your subscribers and stuff would like to have some questions answered too. I'm sure know they little, would. Know a little bit about more, Ron, more about Ron Howard. <laughs> so how'd you how did you get into sequencing? What's your background? What'd you do before you started sequencing? And, Wow. Uh, so long story short, <laughs> uh, I worked at companies like Konica Minolta and Recall and Iron Mountain. And I was that guy that would go into a business <laughs> and uh, try to right size operations as it pertained to security and documents and uh, information that flow in and out of businesses. So I, I was basically a consultant for enterprise content management. It was great. And how did that how did how did that transition into se coming to sequencer? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because when you're in business, uh, you you have to sell, right? And there's the marketing aspect and how you present yourself. So I saw enough of the wrong things in business that I wanted to stay away from. Right. But I saw a lot of really good things and learned a lot of tips and uh, tricks, I guess, if you could say that in sales. But uh, some things about marketing, that's not my strong suit. But certainly, the consultation point, I really learned a lot from a lot of people in that industry. And when did you get into the hobby of lighting? Gosh, you know, Rosa and I, we always had some type of light uh, display not to music so much. So we lived, I don't know, eight years or so in, uh, maybe a little bit less in Moore Park. And uh, we always had like the Santa blow up and lights and LEDs here and there. And it wasn't until we moved here in 2015 that uh, I wanted to take a stab at uh, making lights dance to music. And how I felt. How did you find this type of hobby instead of the traditional Christmas lights, like pixels? How did you find pixels? Like everybody, YouTube, Google, uh, seeing things online that uh, made you think, wow, that's pretty cool. I don't think I'm ever going to be able uh, to do that uh, because it looked really out of my comfort zone. Some of it looked technical, which I was drawn to. Some of it looked artsy, which I was terrified of. Uh, so in 2015, I bought a bunch of uh, AC controllers from Lightorama. And I bought pre-sequenced music, which is kind of funny because who would think later in life that's what I'd be offering. But I found that easy to get my show running without having to learn how to use the software because I didn't start until November of 2015 for my first music light show. Right. And then what made you say, well, I can do this or I can sequence this instead of buying sequences? You said, at some point you said, I want to do this. Or I could do this. Yeah, I remember the night. Uh, it was December, somewhere around December 18th or 19th. And nobody was outside. It was cold. That's a very specific time. For it was a very specific time. Uh, maybe it was later, but uh, I was outside looking up at the, the, the outlines of the house. And they were all the full wave LEDs, red. Mm -hmm. And that's what was sequenced. And I was watching this music, and the music was very moving. But I, I looked up and I said, you know, it makes me feel a certain way. But I, I sort of think I'm missing something. I think I can do better. And that's that's when I went to uh, – started looking online, Google, for things like Vixen and X-Lights and other softwares out there. And uh, somehow I ended up choosing X-Lights – and that was in 2016, and that was <clears throat> that was the beginning of it all. And it was still difficult back then because you had to figure out your own universes and your channels and all that stuff, right? It, that wasn't figured out for you back then. No, uh, you know, in 2016, I was, and I see so much of me and a lot of the new people <laughs> that enter this hobby that very 
quickly get to helping other people. And they don't always have the answers. They don't always know what's going on, but they're trying to help. And it reminds me, I'll never forget uh, one of the guys in one of the forums says, yep, the cheese has slid off the cracker. And that's because I was starting my first year with a very ambitious show. And I wanted to share with the world, you know, my process and what I was going through. And I wanted them to live my journey of me making mistakes because I made a lot of them. But the first time I turned on a Falcon controller, I'll never forget, I was I was videotaping it, and I'm like, look, my lights are on, the controller's on, I configured right. this. But you're right, and the first part of the question you asked was, you know, it was a lot more difficult, and we didn't have a lot of the comfort features in the technology that we have today. Which is another, another great question I just thought of. What advice do you have for people <clears throat> that are just getting involved in the hobby that want to start with? 50,000 pixels that say, oh, I don't have to figure out all the universes, or I don't have to figure, all that stuff's figured out for me now, but they just want to jump right in. What advice do you have for those people? Well, <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, my advice is to start slow. <laughs> um, when we talk about a large show and somebody will say, well, you know, I'm starting my first year, I'm starting with 25,000 pixels. In 2016, that would have been unheard of. That was a lot. But today, that's four or five of your props. <laughs> you know, well, maybe not that many, but I mean, really, people starting off with 10,000 pixels is a pretty good size show. But that, again, that could be five to six of a high density prop. So when people say I have this really large show and it's based on pixel count, that's really not the large show anymore. And I think what I've seen over the last few years is people are now starting with 40, 50, 60, 70,000 pixels with no experience. And they get their shows running. Now, I help with that, <clears throat> but uh, people are ambitious these days. And maybe it's because of what they see uh, in YouTube videos. I, I, I don't know. I think they're just inspired and want to have something like it. Yeah. Right. So how does your – I know you have a musical background. How does your musical background help you with your sequencing? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's an advantage. Uh, I'm, I'm a drummer. So I don't know, you, you, drummers aren't really musicians, right? Um, but rhythms and timbre and texture, I grew up in a concert and marching uh, high school band uh, from fifth grade on, I wanted to be a drummer. And I fell in love with playing in the marching band, marching on the fields, in the competitions, very competitive. And we used to have the slogan, nothing we have done in the past will ever be good enough again. And that's always stuck with me. So uh, I don't play other instruments. I'm not a bassist. I don't play guitar. I don't play piano, although I should have. Uh, just maybe too lazy. <laughs> so I still play drums. So on the sequencing side, I think the musicality behind that helps quite a bit because I'm partially colorblind. So I have to rely on what I see that pleases my eyes. And when I'm not sure what I should do, I'll, I'll reference the content that the music comes from and grab color palettes from possibly a music video or from the movie that it might have come from. And that helps quite a bit. So how do you decide, like what inspires you to say, oh, I'm gonna sequence this song or sequence that song, the songs that you choose, not the songs that, you know, somebody hires you to, to sequence, but how do you pick your own songs? Like, what, what do you, does it just hit you or say, oh, I hear a song, it's like, oh, I want to do that, or you're in a certain mood, or? There's, yeah, it's, it's another good question and a tough question because I have to balance the uh, number of requests for custom sequences that will end up in the store anyway. And there are certain things. Last year, I did less custom sequences uh, for, for pay for clients, and I decided to do a little more of what I wanted to. So I did, uh, I, I think all of the Halloween sequences I did last year were just ones I wanted to do. And then, of course, uh, Nutcracker Christmas, the dubstep version, is just something I wanted to do. And so I was a little more, I guess, selfish last year in doing things I wanted to do that I thought would be cool. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to please the palate of a lot of people at the same time. Uh, and you have over a thousand members, you got to take care of uh, a lot of different tastes. And it's not easy. So I want to deliver. 
And sometimes I get it right with the style of music, and sometimes I don't. Uh, but um, I've never had anyone say, we all hate that song. Uh, okay, Cheeky Christmas is very close. <laughs> but that was for, that was a dare. That was just, uh, that was a Dom Hodgson, I dare you to do this, and I did it, and I speed sequenced it, and there you go. <clears throat> what genre of music... Do you, do you favor any genres of music? Do you like to sequence any genres? Are there any genres you're like, oh, I don't really like this, but I'm going to do it. I have to do it because do you maybe not get excited about certain genres. The, the slower songs can be more challenging to do, but emotionally more impactful. So uh, I like all, a lot of the faith-based uh, music that I'll uh, be tasked with doing or choose to do. Uh, because I, I don't always feel like I'm sequencing it. Sometimes you just get in that zone and you feel like something else is maybe helping you, maybe a greater power, and that's kind of a, a cool thing uh, to feel. And then there are times I just hear a song that just you know blows me away. And um, realms, uh, <laughs> realms from the blah, 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 from the realms of glory. Hello, I can't even, I don't even know the name of my songs. But anyway, Angels from the Realms of Glory was something that David had hired for me, hired me to do. And it took uh, a few years for me to finally really get to it. And it was just something I got so wrapped into doing. And it, it, it took a long time, but the music was consuming me. And it was not an easy sequence. But I like rock uh dubstep i like i sort of like it all i'm not the biggest country music fan in the world yeah I know. now what type of music do you listen to outside of sequencing oh wow so i like a lot of stuff everything from peter gabriel genesis stuff rush pink floyd depeche mode. depeche mode sure 80s yeah you gotta love that stuff love the 80s i grew up in the 80s you know so that was a lot of a lot of fun uh, not abba no abba can go yeah mm -mm, no no would you ever consider sequencing a barry manilow song no okay no so here's another question so how many sequences are out there now 50 70 90 100 500 i don't know Sequencers, sequence, businesses, sequence, yeah, sequence pop up sequence businesses. I think, I think last count, someone told me there were sixty seven or sixty eight, but I think two have bowed out. And uh, yeah, there's, a, but you know what? That can be a good thing for you know the community. How do you feel about all these pop up sequencers? You know what, man? If people are going to put their effort forward and put out good content and sell it, then and people buy it. Uh, sometimes people buy with their ears. So good enough is is good enough. Uh, if we felt that way about our controllers and we bought good enough controllers, that might change the landscape of a successful show. But when it comes to sequences, I think a lot of times uh, people buy with their ears, and then when they get it on their home, it either works or it doesn't. Uh, sometimes you'll have a significant other say, you know, I don't care who does a sequence. I want that on the house. I love that song. And I can't produce every song known. And I have people that suggest songs every month. Have you heard this? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you think you could ever do this? Sure. Uh, will you? I don't know. Let's talk. <laughs> and it just turns into, uh, is there enough time to get it done? Now, where, where do you see the hobby going in the next few years? I think there's going to be a huge influx of blow-up um, animated uh, things. I think Anthony Big is going to, you know, sort of create this whole animated thing with props, with air and moving parts, because we have we have moving parts and then we have air and props. What we don't have is that that melding of moving blow-ups. I think that's the next paradigm shift kind in this hobby. Servo, servo and hot air. Stuff. Yeah, hot air servos. It's just an idea. Now, why do you think your business is so successful? And you're able to sustain that success over the last five five years? Uh, luck. Yeah, luck, luck. Uh, it's, it's a hard question to answer because... I, I don't know that I would call it successful. I would, it's, it's, it's sustainable. That's good. We, we pay the bills and that. But... Um, Money to me is just a short-term thing that we have to have in our lives that uh, afford, you know, paying for the home and bills and keeping electrical and gas on and stuff like that. But I don't, I'm not one of these guys that wants to hoard a lot of money 
certainly want to make a lot of money. That's always good because that affords me to put up nice walls like this. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, that wall was probably seventy nine dollars, yeah. right? Oh, very nice. But um, I think I've been very blessed with uh, a style that I've created with my sequencing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a style that requires a lot of hours to get the sequences to a standard that I can barely tolerate because <laughs> I'm never happy with my work. It's all, it's never quite finished and you just have to move on. So in closing, if you weren't sequencing all this sequence, hobby went away tomorrow, what would you be doing? What would you want to do? What do you think you see yourself doing? Would you go back to, Fixing copiers? <laughs> Sir, I did not fix copiers. I've been known to break a few. Uh, would I ever go... You know, that's really an interesting question because if, if this all just stopped right. and my choices were to get a job at 7-Eleven or go back to the corporate world of Conica Minolta and working downtown LA and working with some brilliant minds and sales and convincing people to spend a lot of money on stuff that they probably don't need to, uh, I'd probably go work at 7-Eleven. Or Starbucks. They are remodeling. <laughs> yes, they, they, our Starbucks is remodeling. We apologize that we had to drive 10 minutes to get your coffee today, sir. But yeah, it's 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 just one of those things. Uh, I think we'll be okay for a while because I'm also a, a teacher, a trainer. You know, I, I try to impart as much X night <laughs> as much X lights information as I can. Here's another question. So so years ago, when everybody was was just a hobbyist before everybody became vendors. Um, <coughs> Did, did you see the hobby maybe transitioning toward people starting to become vendors, going into business, taking it from, oh, instead of just having lights on my house, oh, you know what, I can sell these lights, or I can sell this, or I can, you know, start this big show and charge money for it. And do, do you think that some of those people are still in it for the love of the hobby, or, or they're just making money, or what do you, what do you any thoughts on any of that stuff? I have a lot of thoughts on it, uh, but anything you'd like to share, you know, I, I, I try to stay neutral except for the 19 splinter groups I'm in. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think my advice to anybody starting off as potentially becoming a vendor in this hobby, if you're going to say, I'm going to be a coral vendor, I've got a CNC machine. It's four by four. I can at least produce this work. I think you have to be very careful and have a business plan and not just say, look what I did on a CNC router. I'm a business now. No, you're not. If you're not paying taxes and you you have perhaps a part-time job and you do this on the side, uh, it's hard to give customer service on the side. Yeah, it's not easy. There are some that do it and they I think they do it very well. Uh, but they have work schedules that allow them to be able to communicate wherever they are even if they're at 30,000 feet, right? That That's impressive and that's good. But there are some other people that may have businesses, maybe sequencers that do it on the side, but it's I, I don't know if they're just trying to pay for their lights or they want to turn it into a real business. And it, it's, it's a tough thing. And I could easily change my entire platform and say, you know what, I'm going to be putting out five sequences a month. I know how to do that. I know how to speed sequence and I could still make them look great, but I'm settling. I'm now suddenly doing what they do. And the moment that extreme sequences becomes like the others. It's not extreme. It's not extreme. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Sure. And um, let me go get my checkbook. We can settle this out right now. Yes, let's do that. I want to get another drink. See you, Jay. <laughs>